When we think of the Great Plains of the United States, we imagine endless grasslands, fertile soils where we grow our corn and wheat. We don't often think of massive volcanoes and faults that drop over 30,000 feet. But in southwest Oklahoma, that is exactly what we find. The Wichita Mountains is a scenic destination for nature lovers. Some come to observe the majestic bison as they leisurely meander the plains. Sportsmen come to fish the rich waters of Lake Elmer Thomas and bikers to cruise the countryside. Go to the top of Mount Scott and you'll find cyclists pedaling, tourists touring, and photographers capturing panoramic views of rolling hills and tilted cliffs. All of this is owed to a rich geological history. For the geologist, it is a landscape that tells a story. Our story starts with a rifting event which thinned the lithosphere, allowing for partial melting of the mantle. Some of these melts evolved to become felsic, both granite and rhyolite. These make up important components of what is known as the Wichita Igneous Province. They formed quickly at the end of the Precambrian and the beginning of the Cambrian periods from 530 to 540 million years ago. In this video, we examine four of the felsic rocks that make up the 210,000 cubic kilometer Wichita Igneous Province. We will look at three different types of granites and Carlton rhyolite. The granite and rhyolite form from very similar magmas but develop different textures because of different cooling rates. The rhyolite cooled fastest and is very fine grained. The three different types of granite, the Mount Scott granite, the Quanta granite, and the Reformatory granite, cooled more slowly, allowing time for visible materials, especially quartz and alkali feldspar, to form. The Mount Scott granite comprises Mount Scott and most of the peaks in the eastern Wichitas, including the striking angled top of Mount Sheridan. The granite is mostly pink but can vary to dark red. Two to three millimeter ovoid phenocrysts of alkali feldspar are conspicuous. The fine to medium grains of the Mount Scott granite can be hard to distinguish with the unaided eye, but microscopic examination shows a graniferitic texture. As we see here on the quartz alkali feldspar plagioclase modal diagram, or QAPF, the Mount Scott granite plots in the field of alkali granite. The Quana and Reformatory granites are coarser grained than the Mount Scott granite. The Quana shows chilled margins with the Mount Scott granite, showing that it is younger. It also plots in the field of alkali granite in a QAP modal diagram. The reformatory granite is the coarsest of the three granites, suggesting that it cooled the slowest. It also plots in the field of alkali granite on the QAP modal diagram. All three of the Wichita granites were emplaced and cooled at relatively shallow depths below the Earth's surface. In contrast, the Carlton rhyolite erupted and cooled very quickly. This unit is about one kilometer thick but more may have eroded away in the Cambrian and early Ordovician time. The Carlton rhyolite is too fine-grained to plot on a modal QAP diagram. It is better to use a plot of chemical composition, the total alkali silicas or TAS diagram. Carlton rhyolites plot in the rhyolite field of the TAS diagram. Felsic magmas were associated with mafic magmas in the Wichita Igneous Province. Mafic igneous rocks such as gabbro mostly lie beneath the granites, but sometimes narrow mafic intrusions or diabase dikes poke through the granites. Here we see the dike splitting into two channels around a granite septum. The granite septum has different properties than the other host granite because it was partially melted when the dike was emplaced. This very piece has provided geologists with information about the timing and temperature of the intrusion. Using established cooling models, we know that the diabase was emplaced soon after the granite solidified, a couple of other important points about the Wichita Igneous Province. First is that there are very few rock types found here that are compositionally intermediate between the felsic and the mafic igneous rocks, making it a compositionally bimodal suite. Second is that the composition of the felsic rocks are A-type, distinct from the I-type granitic magmas that form above subduction zones, or the S-type that forms in collision zones. Bimodal igneous suites with A-type felsic rocks form in continental rift zones, and that is the tectonic environment where the Wichita Igneous Suite formed about 535 million years ago. We hope you enjoyed this short field trip to the Wichita Mountains of Southern Oklahoma and its felsic igneous rocks. If you visit the Southern Oklahoma Lockagen and gaze upon the magnificent vistas, don't forget to look at the granite rocks and learn how to read this story. 